thank you so much for joining us today uh, and a very great good evening to all of you uh, myself and dr aishwarya uh, content lead at dr polaris and i'll be your moderator today uh, as a team uh, from dr polaris we are looking forward to being a constant part and parcel of your mbbs learning journey through our dr polaris mbbs learning app in the form of lecture videos notes live discussions animated videos and many more so again i'm super excited to be here today because um, you know it's a very new session of our dearest polaris talks and it's with none other than our dearest dr ryan fernandez medical director at dr polaris and dr sanjit bachpay chief academic officer at dr polaris uh, hi sirs good evening Good evening, Doctor Aisharya. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Good evening, Aisharya. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm evening. absolutely fine, and I'm really excited. So we are back with yet another new session, right? Right. And on full josh, ready? Absolutely. All right. So over to you both. Um, so thank you so much uh, for the others who have joined. So over to our dear sirs. Good evening, everyone. So. Dr. Sanjit and me are back as promised with our step to step by step guide to first year MBBS. Um, like we said, um, like Aishwarya said today, and like we have been saying all along, we at Dr. Polaris, uh, the MBBS learning app, don't uh, just think of ourselves as a coaching uh, app. We believe in being with the students throughout their course, right from their first year of MBBS, um, helping them. with every aspect of mbbs and that is the whole point of um, these polaris talks and today we have come up uh, with another aspect of first year mbbs uh, where we will be discussing about different subjects related to mbbs because uh, though it might sound a little silly where we are talking about subjects of mbbs uh, it is important right now in your first year itself to know what exactly is going to happen in your first year so that as you go along uh, you are already well tuned to it because uh, uh, there will be some of you uh, who have just joined the course who will be having what is called as a foundation course from your colleges as uh, prescribed by nmc all colleges are supposed to have a one month foundation course for all uh, first year mbbs students this foundation course can be done in two ways one is that the entire first month after you join you are not expected to attend your classes you are only having this foundation course lectures probably in one of the seminar halls or in the auditorium where uh, different um, uh, tutor or staff comes and takes uh, classes on different aspects of mbbs or another way of uh, uh, conducting this foundation course is Every day evening after your regular classes uh, of your hello, sir. yes yes doctor Aishwarya ah uh, ah uh, sir there is a small uh, you know internet glitch uh, can you just repeat the last few sentences again if you don't yeah. mind yeah yeah sure. so some of you uh, who who have joined will be having uh, i think still there is an issue um, we are not getting it right from you one second one second one second can you hear me yeah sure sure can you hear me better yeah yeah it's much better now sir okay interrupt yes, you yes, yes, can't hear better. okay i don't want to i don't want the students to miss anything so some of you will be having what is called as a foundation course right now who have joined the uh, course so still there is an issue uh, okay. i think uh, i'm sorry but still a, there is an issue on this for a while i think dr sanjit can take over while i i sort out my issues yeah so uh first year uh, yeah is it, uh, is it audible am i audible ah uh, sanjit is audible to me yeah even ryan sir is audible to me 
uh, then i think our internet is fine i think yeah. so can i continue i think sanjit can interrupt me dr uh, sanjit i'm so sorry sir it is my issue yeah uh, we can continue no problem okay yeah. so uh, like uh, so i think uh, you have followed most of what i've said so uh, some of you will be having a continuous one month foundation course the rest of you uh, as per your college might you might be having regular classes and in the evenings you may have one or two hours of foundation course which will probably go on for two or three months so your foundation course and your regular classes go side by side so that is how uh, you will be having your lecture so we have a varied audience so some of you already would have started uh, studying anatomy physiology biochemistry without even knowing why you are studying hopefully that is not the case if not we are there there to solve that issue the others would not have even joined the anatomy physiology biochemistry you must be still sitting in that nice comfortable ac bar non ac auditorium in your colleges waiting for your classes to begin because at some point even i know because i have taken foundation courses at some point you will feel bored you are raring to go want to start your course want to know exactly what it is being a doctor so for you uh, anatomy physiology biochemistry right now might be new so with that we will begin our introduction to the subjects and here i would like to bring dr sanjit in and tell us uh, dr sanjit uh, something about anatomy we know that in first year there is anatomy physiology biochemistry i think you can give the students and all of us some intro about anatomy hello to everyone uh, first year definitely if you uh, ask me that which is the best year of mbbs i will still say i can go back and read my first year again because it is worth reading it and first year is such a nice compilation of subjects that it connects you straight away to final year and even after it so even if i am a surgeon today i still go back to my first year textbooks go again and again through those chapters because they are that intriguing and they connect you till later part in life too that much importance this foundation year holds so let's talk about anatomy now if you ask me personally even being an ent surgeon i still prefer anatomy as my first subject which i love till date because nothing beats in comparison to having a good knowledge of anatomy and anatomy makes the human body that's what we are made up of now when coming to this subject what intrigues someone now just imagine i'm talking to you my thousand neurons are firing at every particular point of time my mouth is speaking my heart is beating every particular particular function of my body is happening so easily without even knowing and that is what our whole anatomy is about that is what we are made up of each and everything happening in us is related to anatomy and physiology and that is what in first year will be there now can coming to anatomy as per se anatomy why it is so much as well as a very difficult subject regarded by medical students but at the same time it, it is also one of the subjects which directly links you to the feeling that i am becoming a doctor because uh, till the end you will say yeah i feel you know there is something that i am seeing there is something i am observing in my day to day life and i am really intrigued by that let's see something inside the human body and you will feel like a doctor right and later part even if you are a budding surgeon later in life you will be very much connected to the subject till later part of your life now what exactly anatomy is all about i'll tell you four important key pillars of anatomy the first pillar of anatomy is observation so a good doctor is not the one who reads a good doctor is the one who observes and anatomy requires good observation of each and everything that has been taught you in class even later when you will be shown models or dissections the first is observation second is reason that we need to find out why that particular thing is happening so we need to go behind the why when we are reading anatomy third is understanding the human way of working so human understanding is my third pillar and fourth is courage because human anatomy is all about related to courage when you are seeing the human body because many of us when we come out of that notion that we have read physics chemistry and biology and we are fresh into showing dissections and showing uh histologies and osteologies it it you know suddenly makes us uh, feel that you know what has suddenly started to happen out of that bubble of physics chemistry and biology and now suddenly the human body is opened in front of us with so many organs in front of us and we don't know what to do so these are the four pillars what i say now whenever you are in first year and you have started with anatomy don't jump into everything at the same time 
take your own sweet time we will discuss about the textbooks we will discuss about how to read anatomy we will discuss about how to read these particular subjects and how to do the time management and how to recall also but that is in a separate segment but what i am telling you is about in general overview what anatomy is made up of so anatomy as a subject will be covered as different different areas you know you will have regional anatomy you will have systemic anatomy which will contain anatomy of cardiovascular system pulmonary system or let's say renal system neuroanatomy so you will read system by system and then by the end of the day this bubble will get completed in a circle and you start understanding that oh i read this one month back and now it makes sense so everything later on gets connected that's the beauty of this particular subject so don't hush up now one trick that i feel is important what i felt was anatomy has got a lot of confusing terms so when i open the book i see so many you know different different languages that is written inside it anatomy is a language in its own so when i am saying pectoralis major or pectoralis minor or latissimus dorsi or abducens or pollicis longus it seems so unreal to me that what language is this at first particular point this is not english what i used to do was in my way back when i was reading anatomy all these anatomical terms are taken away from latin words and they have got literal meanings so if you understand that latin abbreviation you will never forget it now let's suppose i say pollicis okay there is something called as opponent's pollicis now simply this seems like two words which are very you know ancient opponent's pollicis doesn't make any sense but lack but actually latin word of pollex means a thumb and opponent of this is here so this is a function this is how simple it is so you need to connect all of this you need to make your own efforts in connecting things and then later on you will understand this subject so first you need to orient and then you need to memorize it these are the two things you have to memorize it by the end of the day but first orient yourself to anatomy and then go for memorization right ryan sir do you feel the same when it comes to you know approaching anatomy or linking to physiology as a subject oh definitely before i talk about physiology i think even i want to tell you dr sanchit that anatomy is my favorite uh, subject and i think that is what most surgeons will uh, always say because without knowing anatomy there is no way that you can open up a uh, body and uh, try to correct something that is wrong in it when you don't know what are the right structures in that particular area so like you said for a surgeon anatomy becomes very very important though all the subjects are important so at the same time like how we said that anatomy is our favorite subject tomorrow you get a physician here one of our uh, medicine tutors they will tell you that physiology was their favorite topic why because physiology is basically understanding the normal working of the human body now in anatomy uh, dr sanchit said that you learn about uh, how what are the muscles that move the lips uh, what are the muscles that move the tongue you get to see these muscles then he said that his neurons fire and then he starts talking so physiology is basically that it is Uh, what is the normal working what makes the body work you will study the anatomy of the stomach in your anatomy classes but what exactly is the work of the stomach what are the uh, hormones secreted by the stomach what are the hormones secreted by the pancreas after learning the anatomy of the pancreas you want to know what is the function of the pancreas so how it uh, helps in digestion that is what you mean by physiology basically if you think of anatomy being a house you are building a house the entire structure of the house is anatomy that is what you learn in anatomy the bedroom the living room that is anatomy in the bedroom how the tv works how the refrigerator works how the water comes into the pipes that is basically physiology that is what you will mean by physiology and in physiology you are going to learn about the central nervous system the autonomic nervous system the respiratory system all the normal uh, workings of the human body because remember again just like in anatomy without knowing the norm
okay without knowing the normal physiology without knowing the normal respiratory system how the lungs expand uh, what are the different mechanisms of breathing tomorrow you will not be able to detect an abnormal breathing in a patient to be very very to use very crude terms tomorrow you can't treat malaria dengue without knowing the normal physiology of the body and that is where physiology plays a very 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 important role and that is why we dr sanchit and me are always specifying that first year is very very important it lays the foundation for all the subjects that is anatomy and physiology and what about the biochemistry dr sanchit biochemistry can you uh, just ignore still, you like anatomy you like anatomy physicians like uh, physiology can can we just ignore biochemistry read okay, some important is... questions for the exam and then right. forget it so i'll tell you what happens ryan sir if if what i feel is biochemistry is one subject which everybody is afraid of even me as a student i was so much afraid of biochemistry because when i used Thank to you. open when i used to open the book the terminologies are succinate dehydrogenase fumarate succinate this acetyl choline there's so many terminologies and by the end of the day i used to you know read that tomorrow i was having a short term memory loss because there was nothing in my brain which it actually connect me back to what i read this is what happens in biochemistry it is an amalgamation of general chemistry organic chemistry in a biological way so what i'm saying is biochemistry is one important subject why because it is the basic foundation of how a cell is working how we are functioning each and every molecular process is happening so easily that we won't be able to even you know think of so many ways in which these small small cycles are working so what i feel is when suppose we let's suppose we enter inside into a factory right we know that the machinery is there now that's the anatomy we know that they will work right the machine will work in specific ways that is physiology but actually at molecular level what is happening the engine oil is biochemistry that is what exactly biochemistry is all about now what exactly i feel biochemistry is difficult why because people don't connect to this subject right from first year you need to have a good connection with it how to build a connect with this particular subject which has got so many terminologies so where i went wrong i'll tell you first and what i did to correct it i'll tell you second when i was in first year i never ever paid good attention to building my concepts when i was reading biochemistry when i reached second year or maybe final year i finally understood that i should have done this in order to remember this now so i went back i changed my whole strategy and i started reading the subject again it took me some amount of time first if you have come out of physics chemistry and biology definitely you are good with chemistry because you are here becoming doctor so you are good with chemistry if you are already good with chemistry then you just need to add the bio part in it that's all biochemistry is all about now first comes nomenclature now this this is what i'll tell you some tips and tricks of dealing with biochemistry nomenclature is the first problem names that is names right now suppose if i say succinyl dehydrogenase it seems like a big name but what is the function as means just an enzyme everywhere if you in biochemistry you see as it's an enzyme now what is the name dehydrogenase that means this enzyme is doing some process called as dehydrogenation that means it is just taking out one hydrogen now i have to make it so complex they have named this enzyme so big so nomenclature you need to first see what it actually or literally means in simple terms now comes my second point never ever go ahead in biochemistry right from first page till the last page reading point by point first create an overview of that now luckily what in this particular era when you know we have come up with this wonderful app for you we have given you opportunities in an animated way you can learn all these things so what i would suggest is create an overview think of it like a story think of it as if something is happening inside you right in your cell and this particular function is going on that way suppose i'm respiring respiration is a very normal process but at cellular level how these atps are getting generated nobody knows you are a currency of cell and there are billions of cells inside the body now just imagine by just so simple ways we are doing all of this and that is remarkable about biochemistry it teaches you that 
So create an overview before going on to a particular chapter. First think of it that, yes, if I'm reading Urea cycle, what is about Urea cycle in an overview fashion, then go inside it, dig inside the concepts. Now comes the third part where we all, you know, uh, get that short term memory loss. It's memorization. You have to memorize. So what I felt was when we are dealing with biochemistry, there is a chapter and there are graphs. So memorize those graphs first and then go to the chapter. Don't go line by line because by the end of the day, when you'll reach the graph, you will, you know, start falling off. So first understand it, then memorize it. Now comes the most important, make it relatable. If suppose I am reading biochemistry, if I'm reading about ATP, relate it to a particular case scenario that suppose if a person will come in hypoglycemia or let's say hypotension, he's lost to ATP, he's lost an energy. That will at least grain your thought that how this subject is working, how these currency of cells are important, how we are regaining them. If I add a fluid, how my cells are regenerating, then you can understand what is the logic behind those cycles. And then is review. So create, create your stick on notes, create, we have got an amazing uh, feature in our app that is called as flash notes, which covers these cycles very easily. So you can just see in the morning these cycles and go. So what I used to do during my time is if suppose tomorrow is my class on urea cycle, I just used to flash it out before. I, I used to understand only 25%, but I used to just read it once. And then next day I used to attend my class. So it will connect to you that way. Now, this is a theoretical point of view. Ryan, sir, what do you feel is important practically in such subjects when we are dealing with biochemistry or physiology or anatomy and how the practicals of uh, the young medicals will take place in medical colleges. Yeah, so we discuss in detail about the theory aspect. So usually how um, uh, these uh, things work out is that your once your classes begin, your theory classes are in the morning and the afternoon sessions are dedicated for practical. So anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, um, the students, uh, if there are uh, these days, the norm is that there are around 150 students in every batch. So probably 50 go to anatomy, practicals, 50 go to biochemistry, 50 go to uh, physiology. Um, when it comes to anatomy, when it comes to practicals in general, it is nothing but DIY. Do it yourself. So whatever theory you have learned, uh, it is very important in medicine that you do everything yourself. Every aspect of medicine you should know the practical aspect of it. For example, in anatomy, uh, I think uh, one of uh, the most famous uh, and most awaited and most dreaded parts of uh, uh, first year MBBS, what the students come with a lot of thoughts already in their mind is dissection. So some of them are looking forward to it. Some of them are dreading it. Uh, you, some of them would have heard horror stories about it. No matter what, you have to do dissection. So you will enter that formalin enter uh, filled room. Your eyes will burn for the first time. You may not be able to stand the smell. Uh, let us accept the fact that some of you are even going to faint there, which is uh, nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, great doctors, uh, great surgeons, great physicians have started by fainting in the dissection hall on the first day. So don't worry about it. It is a phase that you all have to go through. And that is what is practical aspect. So when you talk about anatomy, you will have gross practical sessions and microscopic practical session. Gross practical session is nothing but dissection where you will cut open the body. You will check where every muscle is from where that muscle comes and where it's going, where the liver is, where uh, the other organs are, head and neck, eyes, ears, nose, lower limb, your uh, dissection most probably in anatomy in your respective colleges, will um, the theory and practical aspects will go together. Your dissection of the upper limb will correspond with your theory classes of dissection. So that is how it is going to most probably be. And that is how our app is also anyway fine-tuned to where your theory and our practicals go hand in hand. So that is about anatomy dissection. Also, there is microscopic aspect to anatomy where you will look at the individual 
cells in the body under the microscope because you want, again, you want to know what the normal cells look like so that in your second year, when you start reading pathology, which is the disease aspect of the body, there you're looking uh, at the pathology or the disease slides. So for that, in anatomy, you need to know this normal slide. So you will have an afternoon session, most probably called as histology, where you'll be looking at the slide. So that is about the uh, practical aspects of anatomy. Uh, Dr. Sanjit, anything about uh, physiology and biochem practicals? Yeah, physiology, the same way as uh, Ryansa has already highlighted, you will have your theory classes first, and then you will be taken into these practical sessions, which will be held inside lab laboratories, which have been built up specifically for these subjects. So you will have an anatomy lab, you will have a physiology lab, the same way you will have a biochemistry lab too. And you will be posted in a particular time of the day in these laboratories and you will observe things. Now, again, I'm telling you, observe, observe, observe. This is what the key skill behind any good medical student is. So first you need to do a good observation of what exactly the teachers are performing or what exactly the person in front of you is performing. Then after that, you have to repeat it. And you have to increase this repeating skill again and again because it will build you up. So this is what about physiology practicals also is. So once you will go, let's suppose... They will give you a BP apparatus one day. So that is a skill. So one day you will be given a BP apparatus and you will be taking your friend's BP. Suddenly you will come to know that my friend actually has hypertension and suddenly you will become worried. But actually don't worry about it. This is how fun it is, right? So it, it is just divided in the same way. Suppose if it you are reading hematology or let's suppose you are saying blood. So we'll be going to that practical session of blood and we'll tell you the practical aspect of it, making slides, reading slides and all those things. So basically all of this comes and we are going to discuss this much in detail with the theory topics as well as what important textbook you need to learn for this. We're going to touch this. This is just an overview of what anatomy, physiology and biochemistry is all about. So Ryan, sir, what about biochemistry laboratories? How are they designed and what do students need to know about them? First thing that the students need to do uh, know in biochemistry is most probably they, uh, the boys will be asked to contribute urine so that the uh, tests on the urine can be conducted. So I think that was one thing we used to be uh, very shy about because uh, we were asked to take a beaker, uh, go to the washroom and come back with urine and then that urine was distributed to everyone, obviously the girls in the batch. And then the experiments were conducted, which was honestly very embarrassing. Uh, now, when you look back at it, I think uh, we can laugh about it. So this is where, uh, like Dr. Sanchit said, you want to experiment and know. Tomorrow, you, uh, as a physician, uh, you are going to ask for tests about urine, ketone body, blood in urine, uh, 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 sugar in urine. So these are all the experiments where you will be actually heating up urine. Then there's some tests called as Benedict's test. And some of these tests probably would have even tried in chemistry in your 11th and 12th. So basically, biochemistry is um, that the practical session in biochemistry is all about uh, the different tests which will help to deduce whether a person is suffering from some sort of disease like having uh, diabetes or any other uh, disease. So that is what is biochemistry aspect of practicals. So in general, anatomy, physiology, and biochemistry have theory as well as practicals. The theory aspects, what you're studying in the morning, the same thing you will apply it in the afternoon and see for yourself practically what theory that you have studied in or how it applies to the human body. So this is an overview of the subjects of first year MBBS as well as the theory aspects and practical aspects of MBBS. I think with this we can end the session on, um, uh, on this topic and we also would like to inform the students that our next webinar will be on, uh, again we are going step by step in small amounts. So I think one of the most important or interesting uh, topics that the students want is what are the textbooks? Like Dr. Sanchez said, we'll be talking about the textbooks that are required for first year MBBS. The importance of first year uh, subjects we have already touched upon. We'll uh, elaborate a little more. And also we'll talk about the department hierarchy. Uh, so far, if you have, some of you have entered the department, some of you have not entered the departments. So we will talk about uh, what is who is a professor, who is a junior staff, who is a, a senior staff, 
how many years it, it takes to become a senior staff all these aspects we will touch upon in our next uh, webinar that is polaris talks so i i think dr sanjit and me will hand it over to dr aishwarya now uh thank you so much uh, ryan sir and sanjit sir for that really satisfying session uh what an amazing curtain raiser i must say to the first year of mbbs because um, i know each one of us who are here had a very perfect walk through right from introducing the subject to guiding us how to take up each one of them while studying so nothing nothing to say sir really that was an exceptionally uh, good session so with that i would just like to move on to the you know question answer session so now it's uh, time for the participants um, so guys we I request you to raise your hands if you have a question. So, anyone? Come on. Who is our first person to ask the question today? My professor on, used guys. to say, "If there are no questions, then we have done a good job." <laughs> <laughs> really, really. <laughs> But uh, Dr. Sanjit, my professor used to say that uh, if there are no questions, either the two things, either you have done a very good job or they have not understood. They have not understood anything. <laughs> no, sir. We have one person today. Don't worry. <laughs> so, uh, so I think Chaitra. Chaitra, can you unmute yourself? Hello. Uh, can you unmute yourself? Uh, yeah uh hello hi, uh hi uh, good evening yeah i am chaitra first year student okay uh so my question is so uh, now suppose if i get ragged what should i do should i complain it to the authorities or adjust to it chaitra that's a very relevant question because we have all gone through that phase of uh, ragging and we all you know have different types of ideologies inside that's why we have kept it as a separate segment we will discuss about ragging what are the things that you need to take care of how to deal with seniors also we will tell you and how you can get out the best out of your professors also we will tell you so i would rather just suggest you not to do anything haste right now because it's it's a different sensitive thing that happens from college to college it needs to be discussed in detail and that's why we have kept a separate session for it so we'll tell you just to wait for the time we'll get you and we are going to share our own stories with you as to what happened even ryan sir has got a very you know uh, interesting experience when it comes to ragging and i have got a different story when it comes to ragging so yes we will definitely discuss on this point much much more than just you know highlighting the importance ryan okay sir, thank you chaitra for your question uh, yeah the ryan sir do you have anything to add on to that you are you are muted ryan sir i think it's uh, yeah. i i was not being allowed to unmute uh, so <laughs> so i just wanted to add since uh, chaitra asked that question like uh, dr sanjit said it's a, a very sensitive topic and which is why we have kept a separate uh, session for it but uh, chaitra i just want to tell you one thing um if you uh, are rag and when i mean by ragging there are two ways there are sometimes um, students in first year are so scared that even if a senior asks their name um, they think it is ragging and they complain uh, which is not uh, but if it is something genuine and if someone has genuinely humiliated you then it needs to be reported so i don't want you to wait since your first year has already begun and um, even though we have kept it uh, uh, for a later topic in case you feel that the ragging is to a level that it is humiliating you then it has to be reported because ragging is a very serious offense and uh, in at least in our profession uh, for students uh, it is taken very seriously it is a punishable offense so if at all you feel that it is uh, right now uh, you are being ragged uh, to a level of being humiliated or it is causing you mental stress yes it has to be reported and you should not hesitate to report it that's why i say mbbs is just not about reading and that's what we focus on it's a way of life and that's what we are going to teach you through us how to go around each and everything it's just not about reading we'll just not guide you through becoming good doctors or readers we'll guide you through all of this 
and that is exactly. what we will discuss this in much in detail and even the sensitive aspects of it with our so own this, experiences this is the whole point of uh, polaris talks organized Absolutely. by dr polaris Absolutely. i think a wonderful initiative by the uh, 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 people behind the app absolutely okay thank you so much uh, both the sirs and uh, thank you satra for the question so we have one more person um, abilash uh, yes uh, hi abilash uh, yeah hi uh, i have a, uh, i have a doubt like you know in normal classes we have uh, uh, you know in anatomy also like i get confused at times uh, i i have many doubts so i i feel if i start asking each and every doubt at that moment itself it might you know delay the uh, class as a whole so what what do i do i, I keep it for later or uh, you know is it okay. abilash you are a student you are expected to have doubts and no teacher worth his salt will uh, refuse to answer your doubts never keep your doubts to yourself the more you keep it for yourself what will happen is after some time trust me you will hesitate to ask doubts because it is all so much inside ah uh, should i ask should i not don't ever feel hesitant to ask doubts that is the if a teacher is uh, refusing which i i don't think any teacher will refuse uh, but if a teacher is refusing to answer the doubts that's a different question but uh, don't hesitate to ask doubts and that's where we come in for your doubts yeah. Sir, Dr. Sanchit, uh, you have to unmute yourself. Date. I have, I have notes in anatomy and physiology. Till date, after completing all of my studies, till date I go back and ask these questions because you will keep learning. And I know that if suppose I don't clear my doubt on day one today, that doubt is going to stay there for a long term and it keeps on piling up. So after maybe thirty days, you will have so many things to ask that you know that. even a person in front of you might become hesitant that you know he has got 50 60 questions in front of me so it's always better to go one by one if you get a doubt and don't think doubts are stupid don't think that the most silliest of your doubts are doubts are still doubts and the silliest of the things are the most important i'm still telling you that because we hesitate in sitting in the back of the class in asking that if i ask this i might sound silly because people around me might be knowing it but trust me around you 80% of the people will have the same doubt but won't have the courage to ask that that's what happens in medical school so don't keep anything and that is where we come in you are any time welcome this is what makes us different from everyone we are not a coaching we know what it takes to be a doctor we know because we have gone through that phase so we have built this culture and this is the learning culture we want to follow that we want to take a person hand hand by hand and show him the whole journey of how beautiful mbbs can be and how easy it can be if you go the right way uh that is excellent i think that point uh, that dr sanchit said abilash you remember every time you have a doubt remember that every, almost everyone in your batch has that same doubt everyone in your batch is expecting someone else to ask that doubt everyone is thinking that it's a silly doubt so don't hesitate to ask uh, clear any of your doubts and questions and if you have a doubt that means you are reading that's a very good yes. thing Otherwise, you won't have doubts. If you don't read, people who don't read who don't have doubts. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ryan and Dr. Sanjit, and thank you so much, Abhilash, for the question. Uh, is there anybody else who would like to ask a question? Um. Okay. Ah. Uh, so yeah, I can see uh, Gagan. Please unmute yourself. Hi. Hello, hi sir. Good evening. Good evening, Gagan. Uh, sir, as a first year MBBS student, how do I manage my study time? If I'm not mistaken, Abhilash was the one who asked this question uh, last time. I think he had asked how to study MBBS. So, Gagan, um, my advice to you: what is taught on the day, finish it on that day itself. the yeah. more you keep it the more you pile up it's just like your doubts the more you pile up uh, your um, uh, syllabus doesn't stop for you the syllabus continues your classes will continue irrespective of whether you are sick whether you are attending or no the classes keep continuing 
So make sure that whatever is taught on that particular day, you are up to date with that. So that is the first thing. If you are uh, if you are finished reading yeah. once today, read it again. One thing I want you to remember, uh, Gagan. Uh, remember that your eleventh and tour, you were, it was good. But medicine, every subject of medicine is volatile. You you try or uh, try try this yourself. Read anatomy, physiology, or biochemistry today. After one week, try and remember it. You will forget. And don't okay. panic. It is. it happens for everybody students come and ask me all the time sir i studied surgery i have forgotten uh, last week i read this i have forgotten you will forget it reads a, it needs a second reading it's me it needs a third reading so don't worry all this is a step by step process but whatever is taught on that particular day make it up okay. thank you i uh, i used to call it one principle i call it the omr principle orient memorize and recall that's what is the basic and i'll tell you one thing gagan because this is very very important You are running a marathon. Don't sprint out and waste your energies in the first fifteen kilometers. You have to run a long, long way. So maybe I am the best. I will read every day, and you know, you get exhausted in one month of reading because there is so much to read. And in one month, you have done everything, and after one month, the whole energy panel comes down. And now I want to take a break, and suddenly you are out of studies. So you have to run that marathon. So every day, small, small snippets. Every body has different ways of reading. I am not advocating any particular way because you might be having a very different way. Ryan sir is having a different way. I have a different way. So everybody has got their own ways of time management. Suppose if I get still till date, if I'm in the hospital till four in the evening, I come back, I give at least two hours to just you know think and recall whatever I can't recall in an everyday life. I sit with. Suppose if you're dealing with three years, and that is the best part about MBBS, they grow you day by day. You know, first year three subjects, then again three will come, then again you will get four more, then again you will get nine more. So your brain also keeps expanding with that much of you know, uh, and in the end after MBBS you will understand you are you are having 90 subject knowledge inside your brain where it is even coming out from, or how are you even answering? That is the beauty about it. So give time, give it time. Let first get used to everything, get used to the way of you know uh, approaching these subjects, and we will get into time management of each and every subject properly. How much you should read and what you should read and from where you should read. We are going to discuss that in the coming. But don't take shortcuts. Understand the subject. Don't yeah. take shortcuts. Well, your seniors might say read a question bank and uh, read the questions which have come most in the last ten years. No. Uh, that is not that will help you that may help you pass the exam that will not help you become a good doctor don't take shortcuts all right thank you so much uh, sirs and uh, thank you gagan for the question um, if anybody else wants to ask the question please raise your hands okay we have we have suhas with a question uh, can you unmute yourself Uh, hello yeah hello. hi sir has uh hello hello sir good evening yeah good evening sir uh, how difficult is to pass mbbs first year <laughs> <laughs> that is the most relevant question right sir i'm going to go for this first yeah yeah, yeah. it's question. all your I- This was the question I had with me when I was in first year, and I asked my professor after three months. And you know what? I I can totally relate to you right now. When I was in first year, I went to my professor after three months, and I asked him a very genuine question, sir. What is happening? This was the thing. I told him I can't understand anything. What is going on? Sometimes you teach me anatomy, sometimes physiology, and then finally I don't know what to read, what to remember. I'm not getting this. Okay, it's the easiest. it's the easiest thing to pass first year don't think it that way you have come out of physics chemistry biology come on you are really really good when it comes to mental you know learning and you have a really good foundation so definitely you what what you need to be is you need to have hard work and you know you need to know the smart ways of learning it's an ocean out there so if you if you're not smart then also you cannot crack the ocean and at the same time you need to be hard working as well so that you can row your boat all throughout and you can reach finally the island so that is what first year is you need to give patiently some time get oriented but your foundation see i'm telling you the foundation or the crux lies in that if i read this today it should be so strong that i am an advocate of that chapter if i go out and anybody ask me at any particular point of time i can make this chapter easily understandable for a hundred population that is how you should be you should be an advocate if i tell you to put a debate on that topic you should be ready for that debate 
so it shouldn't be point by point because what i'll do if I'm, suppose i open my first chapter in my last year question papers two questions have been asked i'll read those two questions i don't know the backbone behind it and that is what where we go wrong we wrote, we read and after one week we forget so definitely it piles on and it becomes a huge headache to learn every possible thing in the last day now questions are important but that is for last time reading where you are just before the exam seven or eight days or 10 days where also we will give you tests we have those sessions where we will give you important questions we will give you previous year question papers we will give you all those things how to answer these questions and get more marks but wait for the time till it happens don't follow this traditional rule right from the day one that i'll only read the important things because that comes in exams exams are nothing when we are when we are surgeon and we are standing on the table every particular thing every particular artery is important for us is this not that aorta was important because it came in exam so this is what exactly it's all about this is how i can sum up it yes well said okay thank you so much uh, sirs and uh, thank you so much for the question uh, is there anybody else who would like to ask a question please raise your hands uh, okay so i think uh, that uh, comes to the end of the session of uh, question and answers so i would just like to conclude uh, by saying that how tall you be tomorrow all depends on how strong your foundation is today so being medical students the foundation for you is nothing but your first year and that's what our dear sanjit sir and ram sir has been telling the whole time so guys uh, get set for this amazing learning experience with us um with dr pilaris mbps learning app as well so stay tuned for more and happy learning until then thank you everyone thank you ram sir and thank you sanjit sir for uh, this amazing session and joining us today so see you soon on the thursday of this week bye